This is Spoonie back with another tutorial. We're not going to waste any time. We're building an entire ship start to finish in 20 minutes. This video is to show you the how rather than the why, but if you're interested in the why as well, I have other more in-depth tutorials that go over everything in detail. So like any ship, we're going to start out with a beam. I'm going to choose the largest, and then I'm going to place a second right behind it. Next, I'm going to take three slightly smaller beams, and I'm going to place one on each end and one in the center. Next, I'm going to copy and paste this entire section, rotate it, and place it on the side. I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. And next, we're going to copy and paste these beams over. Then we're going to select the entire ship, copy and paste it, rotate it, and place it on top. And that'll give us our frame. Next, we'll need some thrusters. So I'm going to search for a hard point. I'll choose the large hard point, place it off to the side, go back and search for thrusters, and I'm going to use box thrusters. So the first component is the body. If I can get this rotated, there we go. Followed by the combustion chamber, the nozzle, the electricity converter, which is the blue, and the propellant converter, which is the purple. We'll attach our hard point. Make sure it's centered. Copy and paste the entire thing to give us two engines. We'll go ahead and attach those. Two on this side, and two on the opposite side as well. Now we just make sure these are lined up. And they look pretty good. Great, so we're done with our main thrusters. And I'm going to place some bolts. We're going to bolt everything down in a moment using the auto bolt tool. But since these are only partially on a beam, they're going to need a little extra. Let's delete those. And next we're going to use a hard point device for our maneuvering thrusters. And we're going to place four on each side. This will give us our pitch, yaw, and our roll. As you can see, I'm really struggling to get the right rotation on these, but we'll get there eventually. There we go. Just attach those and make sure they're lined up. It looks like this one here on the right is a little bit lower than it needs to be. And now we'll do the top and bottom. Alright, so now that we've got our maneuvering thrusters in place, we'll go ahead and delete this. And we'll place some plates down so that we can add our generator, our 
propellant tank, our batteries, flight control unit, and our flight computer. It's a good idea to every now and then just select the entire ship and use the auto bolt tool. And do not forget to weld everything together. Before we start wiring or placing other components, we're going to do a quick durability check while all of these things are still easy to see. On this one, this maneuvering thruster is not quite connected, so we'll fix that. And it looks like that's solved all of our durability issues. So now we'll place our generator. So generators can only make use of three generator units. So for every three generator units, you're gonna need another fuel chamber. And if the generator units from multiple generators are touching one another, they will produce additional heat. So keep that in mind. If you have the room for it, try to space them out a little bit. Otherwise, you may need to add uh, additional radiators or additional cooling racks. So now we'll add our propellant tank. I'm going to use a medium. That way we have to refuel a little bit less often. This one doesn't want to snap into place, so we'll move it back a little bit, see if that helps. There we go. And you'll need a support on either side. And we'll auto bolt this down as well. And everything else just for good measure. Alright, so next we're going to need a radiator. Your generator will not function if you don't have some kind of cooling device attached to the ship. I like to use radiators, but if this is a ship that's going to be hit with asteroids or in combat, you may want to think about cooling racks just because they're a little bit more durable and easier to see. You could use both. One as a backup, just in case, but it will use the cooling racks first before it switches to the radiator. So keep that in mind, you'll need a recharging rack as well. All right, so next we're gonna add a couple small batteries. I think two should be fine. Batteries are particularly useful if you're gonna be turning off your generator Generators do take a little bit of time to warm up. We'll also add some fuel rod racks so we can bring some extra fuel rods with us. Next, we'll add our flight control unit. Make sure this is right side up. The square on top should be facing the top of your ship, and the three arrows should be facing the front of your ship. The blue box behind it is the flight computer. And it looks like this isn't actually touching the ground, so we'll fix that. If you move something, you'll need to auto bolt it down again, because when you move things, it removes all the bolts from that item. Next, we're going to add a 
a section just at the front for our flight chair. Make sure that's welded on. Now we can add our flight chair. You'll need a pilot chair stand and a pilot chair. You should have bolted the stand in place. It usually doesn't auto bolt down to the ship very well. And then this control table for some buttons and levers if we want. Auto bolt that all together. And then we're going to add a control table for our ship controls. And then we'll add a control table stand, which will give us a plug. And we'll add a control table. And as long as these tables are in contact with one another, you don't have to plug in anything that's attached to them. Sometimes the rotation on these can be a little tricky. It does help to place them. They don't like to snap into place unless they're also at a 45 degree angle. take a quick look around and make sure we didn't forget anything. Doesn't look like we did. So we can start adding some levers. We'll need three centering levers. For our yaw pitch and our roll. And then we'll need one regular that will give us our acceleration. I'll place this here off to the side. This one will have to be plugged in individually since it is not attached to a table. Then we'll select everything and we'll auto bolt everything down. Durability looks good. So we can start placing our cables and our pipes. Now the propellant tank doesn't have to be cabled to actually function, but if you want to set up anything on your control tables that will read the amount of propellant in the tank, then it does. This part of shipbuilding does tend to be the most tedious, and you can make it a little quicker if, with the use of ducts. I'm not using any ducts on this ship though. This is also the most important step, because if everything isn't wired properly, then it's not going to work. You can see the boxes will turn green on the thrusters to indicate they have been connected. When you're using the pipe tool though, uh, the boxes just disappear. They don't change colors. So only one battery needs to be connected. Any batteries that are in contact with one another will function as one. check and make sure everything that needs to be cabled together is. And then we'll 
we'll do our flight chair. I did forget to cable the radiator, but we'll get that when we do the piping. So now these green tubes are the pipes. That's what moves fuel and items around your ship. And if we had cargo crates on this ship, we would need to pipe and cable those as well. If they're in contact with one another, it's just like the batteries, only one actually needs to have a connection, but they do need to be piped and cabled. So now we'll do the radiator. And if you have multiple generators, it's also a good idea to pipe each one of them individually, because only a certain amount of heat can come off of these uh, these ports here. So we didn't add a resource bridge to the ship, since there are no cargo crates. But if you do add a resource bridge, it functions similarly to the maneuvering thruster. Just add it to the hard point, and then attach the hard point, cable and pipe it, and you're all set. You can hear the generator did kick on. That's because we attached it to the radiator. So now we need to change some of the name values for our levers. So we're going to copy and paste this FCU rotational yaw. And we're going to copy it over to where it says lever state. And we're going to do the exact same thing for each of these three levers, only we're going to change yaw to pitch on one and to roll on another. Next for the lever we'll use is our accelerator. We will change the value to FCU forward and we'll press F5 to give it a test. As you can see it does function, although it is way too sensitive. So we'll exit test mode by pressing F5 and reduce the minimum output and the maximum output in order to reduce the sensitivity. While we're fixing our values, we'll set our lever centering speed on our accelerator to 50. If it is set to zero, it'll just stay wherever you've set it. So then we'll press F5, go back into our testing. And as you can see, the sensitivity is much more tolerable. So let's give it a test. And everything works. So there you go. A fully functional ship 
start to finish in 20 minutes. Next, we're going to add a button to our dash so that we can turn on and off our generator. And then we're done. So we're just going to search the asset browser for a button. We use a hybrid button, which gives us a screen and a button. Place it on our dash. Make sure you remember to bolt this down. We'll change the name to Gen for a generator. The button style should be set to 1 so that it is a fixed position. If it's set to 0, it'll just come back up once you've let go of it. We're going to set our on state value to 100, which will tell the generator what to set itself to. Then we're going to select all three of our generators. And where it says generator unit rate limit, not generator unit rate, we're going to delete everything but the GEN. Do that for all three. Now let's test it. As you can see, when you press the button, it turns on and off the generator. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message. I'll do my best to help.